Hello, it's Theo from Theo's Tech Tips, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a Spring Boot application in Java. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is to open up the code editor, which in this case is IntelliJ IDEA, and we're going to make a new project, and we're going to click Create. So the first thing we're going to do is to go to our pom.xml, add the parent of Spring Boot right under this version. And now we need to add our dependencies that we're going to use. And the ones that we're using are Spring Boot Starter Web and Spring Boot Starter Time Leaf. And once you've added those dependencies, you're going to click this refresh button in the top corner. This is going to download all of the dependencies that we've specified. So now once that's done, we're going to go into our main file and here's our sample code. And right above our public class main, we're going to add a Spring Boot application annotation. And this is going to tell Spring Boot that this is the launching point of the application. And in our constructor here, we're going to say spring application dot run main dot class args. So now that we have our application set up, we need to add a controller so that we can actually view and request certain pages. So to do that, we're going to make a new Java class and we're going to just call this simple controller. And this simple controller is going to be a REST controller. And the difference from a Java REST controller and just a controller is that the REST controller is focused on REST requests. So you just make a request and it returns back data instead of a general purpose controller. So this will add other annotations like the target, the retention, and the response body, which tells it to just display the pure text. So in this simple controller, we are going to add an annotation called get mapping, which will tell it to map a certain get request to this endpoint. And we could just specify our endpoint in this parameter. So then we're going to make a method that returns a string. And there we go. So now we're going to run this file. And to do that, we're going to edit our configurations and add a new application configuration. We're going to call it main and then add the main class. And click apply. And then we're going to close it. And then we could go to run, run main. And as you can see, it will show our spring version and all of the stuff you need to know, like it's running on 8080. So now we're going to open up a browser and go to localhost 8080. And there it is. So this is a very simple Spring Boot app. So let's go one step more complicated and add an HTML file, also known as a template. So this is where we get to use our time leaf dependency that we imported first. So we're going to make a folder in this resources called templates and we're going to make a new HTML file and I'm just going to call this simple template. So we can just fill out our file with whatever we want. Now to add this template, we have to make a new controller or modify this controller because rest controller will not give this template. It's designed to, as I mentioned earlier, to display REST requests. So we need to add a new controller that's an actual controller, not just a REST controller. So we're going to call this template controller. And just like before, we're going to add an annotation up here, but instead we're going to add just controller. And we're going to add another get mapping to slash template. And we once again need to make a method that will return a string, which is really interesting because you might be thinking, well, I want to return a template, not just a string of text, but that time leaf dependency that we imported first, it's going to tell the controller that we are actually trying to return a template, not a string of text. So we're going to make another method that returns a string that's called template. So now in this template method, we are going to return the name of our template in a string, which is simple template. 
and we don't need the HTML. So now we're going to run this and we're going to localhost 8080 slash template and there's our template, hello world. So now we're going to take it one step further because in your actual web server app, you're going to be like probably getting stuff from a database or getting some stuff in Java and you want to display that in the web page. So how do we do that? Well, we can use something called timeleaf variables. So to do that, we're going to make another get mapping in our template controller and we're going to call this variables and we're going to make a method that returns a string and it's going to be called variables. Except this time, the parameter that we're going to be specifying is a model map. In here, we can actually plug as many variables as we want into this model. So you can just go model dot put variable hello. And we are going to return the name of our template that we will create in just a second, which is called variable template. So now we're going to make that new template called variable template. But in this HTML, we're going to be using special timeleaf commands that HTML doesn't know what that is. So in order for HTML to treat it normally, we need to add this XML NS in our HTML tag, which leads to timeleaf.org. And now we can use our TH attributes in our page. So to do this, we're just going to make our HTML just like we had before. Let's say value, and then we're going to make a span. But in order to output this text in the span, we need to specify an attribute called th colon text. And we can specify our variable name in a dollar sign followed by braces. And we're just going to say the name of our variable, which we called variable. So now we can stop and rerun this. I'm going to go to slash variables. And it should output our variable from the Java, which is what we specified earlier. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm Theo from Theo's Tech Tips, and I'll see you next time. Bye.